Welcome back, everybody. It is episode four as I am in my first season, hopefully leading Tipton Town to the first of many promotions within the English football pyramid. If you didn't see the first three episodes, there's a link in the description below that will take you back to episode one. We are now in first place with 10 matches under our belts, and we're going to go ahead and try to proceed pretty far into the season here in this next episode hopefully start to get into uh, a situation where we can get a picture of where we might be headed uh the the team is pretty well shaped the way that i want it to there's still some minor things i may want to make changes to but i'm feeling pretty good about where things are at this point so as is expected we continue to see other clubs into interested in some of our players uh, and we can see here that Sebastian Sondi has left. Uh, he was kind of on the fringes. He wasn't really playing much for us anyway. So he's moving on to Silverdale Athletic. And we're adding some additional homegrown player updates here. We have offers being made for one of our goalkeepers, Keenan Slater. But again, not kind of on our first team at the moment. And we, we currently have a bit of a break uh, without a, a match, which is probably going to give an opportunity for those other teams to get caught up in terms of their matches played. Because you can see most of the teams have not yet played their 10th match. And that's going to give us a better sense of where things stand because there are three teams that could sur surpass us in the standings once they've played their 10th match. And our upcoming match is against All Scott Heath, which is certainly uh, currently in eighth place, but only four points behind. All right, so let's take a look at things here. Team Dudley has actually just finished their 11th match. Everybody else has played now at least 10. So we can see where things stand. Wirely is the team to beat. They are three points ahead of us. They've got six wins, three draws, and a loss compared to our five wins, three draws, and two losses. So we are a full three points now out of first place with everybody having played their 10th match. So still a little bit of catching up to do, but it's early in the season. We're only about a quarter of the way through, so plenty of time for us to get caught back up. All right, so while we continue to wait for our next match, two more of our players have signed elsewhere. Longwell Green have secured the signing of experienced midfielder Stuart Bridges on a free from Tipton Town. And we've also got uh, the Pitsanger Dynamo have pulled off the signing of Michael Robinson. So here's where we are with our starting lineup. None of those players that we've had signed away are among our best. And I still would very much like to get a better right midfielder just Marley Blair's just not a good fit there, but I don't really have anyone else who is. We've got a lot of defenders uh, more than we need, so we're going to have to try to clear things up a little bit here. But I definitely need an uh, inverted winger, but they're hard to come by. I've been looking, haven't been able to find one, but we'll keep our eyes peeled for that. Otherwise, I'm peeling, feeling pretty good about the roster, especially up front. So here's our roster now, and it looks like everybody is a fit for their position. We've added uh, Harwood here. Now, he's not a great player, but he is a fit for the position. So that's one of those struggles that I, I'm, I'm trying to deal with is, is it better to have a quality player in a position who maybe isn't the best player but is the best fit, or is it better to have a really good player that doesn't fit the position. So those are the kinds of things we're going to have to experiment with. I've also added a couple of new forwards that may actually be better than Craig and Walker, but Walker's been playing so well that I just don't know that I want to replace him right now. But we're going to try uh, maybe as backups some of these new players. These are the two here, Chakawana and uh, Agadino. So here's that player here. You can see how he's rated. He may be a significant improvement over what I had before. So uh, we may have to give him a try in there. All right. Well, I had a big win over Al Scott Heath, three to nothing, which puts me firmly in first place. Even with everyone having played their matches, we're in a tie with Wirely. And lo and behold, look who we're up against next. So we're going to go ahead and watch that match because that is a battle for first place. So let's see what happens. So here we go. It's breezy, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 1300 one o'clock kickoff 39 tickets sold on an okay pitch here at tipton sports academy we are pretty strong favorites you can see that uh, we've only won we've won the three in a row which has been uh, really key for us uh, but before that it was a little bit more of a struggle uh, on the other hand you can see here that 
Uh, Bromyard got a victory over Wirely, which is what brought us into that first place tie. Uh, they're a low scoring team, Wirely is. They don't uh, necessarily always put up a bunch of points, but I'm feeling pretty good about things here. So let's see what happens in this one. Starting to finally get everyone into good match condition. Uh, so I think that's going to help as we settle in and we get uh, better performances moving forward. I've turned off the sound. A couple of you pointed out that the in-game sound was pretty loud, so I thought it would just be easier to turn it off. Got a yellow card already showing up here in the first five minutes, but let's go ahead and see what happens. I feel really good about my team, especially up front. We're playing cautiously as ha we have been for the last several matches. That definitely seems to be working out pretty good. All right, here we go. Here's an opportunity. Well, I thought there was. Oh, no, 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 no. And there's a penalty kick for Harley right off the bat. Not good news. Not good news at all. We may be getting ourselves set up from behind to begin with, and we are. Okay. Well, let me take a look real quick at the situation. I'm a little concerned about this yellow card. I don't want to end up in a situation where we find ourselves down two goals right off the bat, but or down a player right off the bat. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to go ahead and swap him out. I don't want to take any chances at all. Six minutes in, already down a goal because of that penalty kick. Let's hope things get better. So far, it's not looking real promising. Oh! And there's another yellow card, but he's got three. You know, you expect that in a match where you're dealing with two teams tied for first place. There are going to be a lot of tension Yes! Please tell me he wasn't offside. Nothing? Nothing? Awesome. Excellent. Watch the uh, the Chelsea-Manchester United match yesterday on TV. My son's a big Man U fan. And one of his good friends from soccer is a Chelsea fan. And uh, Chelsea had not one but two goals taken away by VAR. I know that Chelsea fans could not have been happy about that. Five yellow cards now for the Wiley players. Three for myself, plus a fourth one on a player who's been taken out. So just 34 minutes in and already nine yellow cards. Oh, here's a great opportunity. Come on, Craig. Oh, we're going to at least be set up for a uh, corner kick here. Man, this is an intense match. Look at all those yellow cards. You know, you're dealing with amateurs. You're dealing with a first a battle for first place, and they're all right at the keeper. Would not surprise me a bit if one or both teams end up getting red cards before this match is over. Let's just hope it happens to him first. Wow. I can't believe that one went right off the right side post. He's got nine shots on goal to my three. That's really not ideal. I'm feeling like we may have to up our game a little bit here. So we're at halftime. You can see the stats. I'm really lucky to be in a situation where it's tied. I feel like we're going to have to get some... Get some fresh blood in there. It looks like Walker's not having his best game, so let's go ahead and, and bring in a fresh striker. Doesn't have real good match sharpness, but uh, I still feel like we've got... Oh, where was that going to, Craig? My goodness, that was a terrible pass. All right, Curly, let's drop that. There you go. Okay, okay. Uh, he's offside. Don't pass it to him. Yes! What a strike by Tag! Wow! From outside the box. That was beautiful. 25 yards out. Man, look at the power he had on that thing. That was a beautiful go-ahead goal in the 47th minute. Let's take a look at that one again. I thought he was trying to figure out who he was going to pass that to, and I was worried he was going to pass it to Craig, who was offside. 
but instead, right past the keeper. That was beautiful. So again, really, right now, the only concern is the yellow card situation. We've got six now. Seven, actually, if you count the guy we took out. A good bit of my lineup has yellow cards, but so does his. All right, come on, guys. 64th minute. Par's taking his time. All right, here, here we go, here we go. That was a nice go ahead. Come on, Craig, put it in. Yeah, it took too long to get there. Gave the keeper time to recover. No, 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 no. Dude, you just came in. At least there was no yellow card on that one. 13 yellow cards have been issued in this match. That is crazy. I've never seen that many. At least not on this game. All right, Craig, here's another chance. Make it count, my friend. Ugh. Oh, we've got to win those one-on-one -on -one situations like that. At least we've got a corner out of it. Come on, Nash. Set him up. Nobody there. Nobody there at all. All right. 15 shots on goal for them, and their only goal is on the penalty kick. I don't think we're going to make another sub. I think we're pretty content to stay with the lineup that I've got right now. Hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. There's probably a little over 10 minutes left in the match. All right, defense. There you go, Parr. Nice job. Way to take it off of him. All right, Craig, you need to step it up, dude. You've had some chances, and you haven't made the most of them. Here's my fresh meat. Oh, yeah. Oh, my fresh striker in there. I thought he was going to have a chance. We have got to learn to finish on those. We've got those one-on-one -on -one chances. All right, Nash, we need a, need a better corner out of you this time. That last kick wasn't a great one. Nothing. Ah. Uh. We're failing on the corners, and we're failing in the one-on-one -on -one opportunities. That's a reason it's only 2-1 to one right now. That's all right. 19 shots on goal for him, 7 on target. It's a nice performance by my keeper. Let's see if he can continue it here. Come on, D. Get it from him. Don't give him a chance. No, he's wide open. Oh, boy. Gave it right back to him. Get that out of there. No! <laughs> In the 88th minute, he ties it up. Uh, okay. We're going to get... We're going to attack, and we're going to try to try to get this one back. Yeah, I think this is going to end in a draw. Oh, boy. Well, you know, considering he had 21 shots on goal, 8 on target, look at 42 fouls in that match. My goodness. Honestly, I probably shouldn't complain too much. That could have very easily gone different. So even though that first place match didn't go the way that we wanted it to, we did just now get a nice 2 nothing victory over Droitwich Spa in which we only gave up two shots on goal. So where that puts us now is six matches in a row without a loss. Uh, now, granted... Two of those were draws at 2-2, two to two, but everything else is a win. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at where things stand now. That puts us back on top. Uh, granted, that is pending what happens in our next match. But uh, you see Team Dudley is a point behind in third place, but they've also played one additional match. So we're back to tied still with Wirely. Uh, both teams with seven wins, four draws, and two losses. I've got a better goal differential. In fact, I'm the only one with a double-digit goal differential right now. Cameron Walker with eight goals in 13 matches. Just fantastic play from him. He's got such a leg on him. Some of the goals he's scored have just been on fire. Uh, so we move back up into first place. Let's go ahead and continue continue on and see where things stand. We're just about halfway through the season now. I don't know. Let's see. We've got 15 teams total. So I guess 28 matches would be the full season. So we are. We're one more uh, match away from halfway. 
All right, so we skipped ahead a little bit and just taking a look at where the situation is at the moment. I just want to show some of the recent fixtures. Uh, we had a pretty good run there for a while with the victories over Wren's Nest, Bromyard, and Allscott Heath. Had that tie against Wyerley uh, in that battle for first place. Got wins against Droitwich Spa and FC Darleston. But then we had this disaster against Gornal Colts. Uh, started out well enough. I had a one nothing lead at halftime. And then the second half, he scored four goals and just blew me out. It's really the worst defeat I've had this season. Came back with a 2 nothing victory against Willenhall. It was kind of sloppy. Uh, committed 28 fouls to only 12 for Willenhall, but still got the victory. I just want to kind of take a look at the team as it is now. Uh, shaping up pretty nicely. We uh, bulked up the defense a little bit with the signing of Malambo, who's a pretty decent fullback. Uh, Wilson's been my big, big signing, though. George Wilson, right now, uh, along with McCulloch, my keeper, are my stars on this team. George Wilson, 18 years old. Uh, his very first appearance in any level of uh, soccer uh, at this degree. Uh, he played for Blackburn, but never had any appearances. He's had two appearances for me so far. Uh, you can see the numbers here. Uh, we don't have many players that have got into the green where you get up to that level. Uh, 16 in natural fitness and stamina, 17 in work rate, 16 in aggression and bravery, uh, some decent skill in anticipation, concentration, leadership, teamwork, tackling. Uh, so not a lot in the areas of um, you know kicking and scoring, but he's a really nice midfielder, center midfielder to have for this team, and it's going to make a lot of things uh, easier moving forward. He's a ball-winning midfielder. He hopefully will help me to control the possession and get it to my scorers. So we'll see how that works out. We're going to play through just a couple more matches and get to the kind of the, the last few months of the season, see if we can stay on top. Uh, and then we'll come back with one more episode to wrap up the season and see if we can uh, get that promotion that we want. So just looking over the roster, I actually did kind of a purge uh, about a week of game time or so ago. Uh, cleared out most of the bottom end of the roster, got rid of most of those one-star ability players. I included in the cuts that I made uh, was uh, my vice captain. Uh, who actually uh, we've talked a lot about. That was uh, Joe Tessum, I believe his name was. Uh, in fact, I'll go back and show you where those cuts were uh, in my inbox here. You can see there are a bunch of free transfers. And right here he is, Joe Tessum, 47-year-old midfielder, who uh, got that red card in the very first match of the season, actually did some nice things for me early. Uh, here's another player, Roscoe Desane, who did some nice things for me early. But as we've made more and more signings to this squad, just really didn't have a place anymore on the team. So as we make more and more signings, the roster gets more uh, top-heavy and really you can see how many players really just don't have any opportunities for playing time. We could probably make some further cuts probably from here down on the roster, uh, but we'll wait for now. There's not really any need to do that. But you can see right here, George Wilson, my best player, um, Benji Agudino, Agudiono, uh, who and Cameron McCulloch. These are all players that I've added uh, since the season began, uh, really getting a better, better and better roster all the time. Here's the competition. Uh, the table as it stands. I've got a one point lead over Dudley, but what's misleading about that, of course, is Wireley has played two fewer matches. So if they were to get wins in both of those, they'd have a three point lead on us. Uh, the good news is that at the very worst, I am in second place, even with them uh, and Gornel playing their, their matches. So we'll, we'll go through a couple more matches. We've got 12 to go. Maybe we'll play one or two more for this episode. So two of our players have joined uh, Bangor City. Uh, Reese Bagridge and Chris Saunders. You can see both of them getting a nice payday. Uh, Chris Bagridge is going to get almost ten thousand uh, per year, and Saunders nearly eight thousand. So uh, those are players that really weren't doing a lot for us anyway. So it doesn't really impact us in any big way. The nice thing so far is that none of my star players have been signed away. It seems like mostly the players that are leaving are leaving because they just really weren't getting any playing time and they were looking for something better. So uh, the roster keeps getting stronger. We did add another uh, defensive player uh, to help out things here. Uh, so things are looking pretty good right now, and I'm feeling better and better as we move along. We're going to be playing the Wellington Amateurs next. So we are into January of 2020. We're almost caught up to real time now. And you can see the UK has decided not to leave the European Union. So no Brexit. 
Uh, here's our monthly head coach performance summary. Looking really good. Club vision, we're at A-plus right now. Uh, as far as matches, they are a little disappointed with some of the results we're getting on the pitch, but I don't know what the complaint is. We're in first place, so that really shouldn't be a huge problem. Uh, some dynamic updates. David Collis is a highly influential player. Uh, Phil Smith and Mero are the influential players. Uh, and we're just getting prepared for the Wellington Amateurs. Decent turnout prepared uh, or for this match. 40 tickets are expected to be sold. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at the standings. So now you can see that they did win their next match. That puts us in a tie. Uh, but, of course, we've played one more match, and we've got a loss in that extra match. So theoretically really in second place at this point. But... Going to have to keep winning. Team Dudley is right there on our heels. We can't fall to third place and, and risk losing out on the chance for promotion. All right, 22nd minute. We are up against the Wellington Amateurs and Cameron Walker with his 10th goal of the season. And it was an easy one made possible for by some nice ball movement. You can see here a beautiful, nice little pass and an easy tap in for Walker to take the one nothing lead early in this one. All right, we're at halftime. Got another goal, George Craig in the 44th minute. Looking good so far. Seven shots to just one for the Wellington Amateurs. It's been pretty much a dominating performance so far. Hopefully that continues into the second half. All right, well, we'll update you on what's going on. But right now we've got ourselves a penalty kick. We'll see if Walker can get his 11th goal of the season. And he does. Oh, Yes, he continues to be our dominant force up front. Wellington did have a goal that was disallowed. The guy was obscenely far offside. Uh, so it, w it wasn't even a question that it was going to be called back. Uh, so we're up to 3 nothing. It looks like we're going to definitely be able to stay on top. So I'm not sure if it's a matter of conditioning and my players just are having a rough time uh, staying fit. But the second half has been a struggle for me as of late in these matches. Uh, and you can see here, uh, the score doesn't reflect it because I had a 3 nothing lead, but I really have been dominated in the second half in terms of uh, the statistics and everything. But it looks like we might have a chance here. Drop that one off, Blair. There you go. Oh, beautiful goal by George Wilson. His first of the season. Our star center midfielder gets himself on the board. That was a really nice setup. Uh, all made possible because of, of some quick down the, uh, the field play. But... Um, you know, he only had one shot in the first half. He ended up with 16. He had 15 shots on goal all in the second half. So that tells me that combined with some of my other performances as of late that I've got a problem in the second half of matches that I'm going to have to deal with. If you have any thoughts on how I can do that as an amateur club, please let me know. Use that comment section below. We're going to wrap this episode up and just take a look at the standings as they are now. And then we will come back with one more episode for this season. Uh, by the time the next episode is done, we should be completed with the first season. And we should be able to see whether or not we've been able to gain that first promotion to start our climb up the football pyramid. So here we are, uh, staying one point ahead of Team Dudley, who continues to keep pace with us. Uh, and, of course, you can see still got that three-point lead now against Worley, which w they've got their third loss, which means that uh, we are in a first-place tie at the worst. Even if they win their next match, we'll have identical records. So, you know, it's super close, though. It really is three teams fighting for two spots right now. Uh, Gornel's not far behind. Uh, the upcoming schedule is going to determine the tail here. You can see with the matches we've got left, we've got Team Dudley. We've got Worley coming up in the last month of the season. That's going to be a huge one. Gornel Colts, that'll be a huge match. Another uh, match against uh, All Scott Heath. So some of the top teams in the league will be coming up in this last uh, set of matches. So let me know your thoughts about all of that, and we will come back with that next episode, hopefully in the next few days. Thanks for watching.